Okay. One, two, three. I didn't really know. <laughs> Take one of 20. Another one just for the okay. You're doing a really good sort of presenter face, like. Is that a presenter face? Well, you know. <laughs> Am I in shot? On three. Have a nice day. the end of the courgettes, the frost has got into the tunnel and uh, is turning all the leaves black so it's time to pull these out. Good morning folks, so it's another day at Tapanoff Farm and today we're working in the market garden, getting the place ready for winter. We're about to do our very last veg box harvest in a couple of days time, so that's the end of the season. So the garden's looking pretty empty. Most of the crops have been pulled out and sold through the veg box scheme. So today we're gonna to be focusing on removing landscape fabric, removing a lot of the blue pipes that we use as fabric support. We're gonna harvest some of the last root crops and put them into storage. And generally just tidying up the garden and getting some of the silage sheets covering the plots that we use to protect the soil over winter. And uh, yeah, just general maintenance. We're also going to be looking at which plot to put the hens in. We're going to use the chick shaw for the first time, hopefully, fingers crossed, tonight. Um, going to be putting the hens in there tonight and moving the chick shaw out into one of the plots tomorrow that we want the hens to do some work on for us. Last vlog, we were moving uh, goat manure from the goat buyer over into here, the chicken run. And um, we had tons of the stuff. Here's the compost pile behind me. It's amazing how much that's reduced in the week since we did the job at moving the manure. It doesn't look as impressive as it did. It is a large amount of goat bedding. And the heat is incredible. Let me just grab a compost thermometer and I'll show you what heat this is generating. Right, so it was a little hard to see what the temperature gauge was reading just then because it's a bit uh, steamed up, but it was just over 65. It's been around 70, 70 degrees, 65 degrees centigrade that is. Like getting nice and hot in there, so hence why it's produced in size quite quickly. Anyway, that's great to see. I think we'll definitely have our compost supply for next year. Right, better go and help out in the garden, getting our market garden ready for winter. So today we're doing preparation in the polytunnel to get it ready for winter. We're going to be bringing the hens in here in a few weeks time. We've still got a good crop of salad which we're eating in the house. So we're going to be, we're not going to be bringing the hens in until we've eaten that. Tom's just pulling out the courgettes behind us there. And um, Rose is making a space under our propagation bench for three logs that we've inoculated with shiitake spawn. Okay, so this is a log from uh about a year ago from our mushroom course that we ran here and the woman that uh, led the course, Anne Miller, came by the other day to check on the logs which have been down in our little bit of woodland down to the south of the property. Most of them needed a little bit longer, generally she would wait until spring to get them going. These ones seem to have matured. These white spots here at the end of the log are the signs of the mycelium which will be normally directly below these dowels that were put in to the log. So during the course um, holes were drilled in the log and then an inoculated dowel with shiitake was put inside and then sealed with wax and then these were left in a, in a wood in the woodland down there under shade cloth and just directly below each of these you can see where the mycelium have traveled along the wood so it's a sign that it's been successful and so and then the brown color is where it's really matured these three pieces of birch were pretty ready to actually be shocked so we thought we'd have an experiment um, and shock them. Two things seem to trigger the shiitake to fruit. That is um, being wet. So it's, it's an autumn storm, as Anne would say. So um, imagine that there's already uh, a log that's already got the mushrooms that have kind of um, traveled through it. And then there's a storm, so it's wet and the movement of the branch falling off of the tree causes the mushrooms to then fruit to start the cycle again. What we've done is by moving it from the pile, we've created that movement, it's very sensitive to movement, and then we ch chucked it in a pond for a few days in our, in our forest garden, and now we're putting it somewhere quite humid and not really cold, so our polytunnel, um, and hopefully 
very soon we'll have some mushrooms. So what we're doing right now is putting it in its place to then start to fruit. So we've put a spot just under our uh, seeding tables and we're gonna prop these up there. Great, so we're gonna leave these here. We're gonna put some shade cloth over them to protect them from some of the sun that comes in here. And uh, fingers crossed they might fruit. So I'm just trying to weigh up whether to do what I did last year and pull out these plants and just hang them up on our crop bars where they will ripen, hopefully or whether to just pick them off and just make green tomato chutney because it's very yummy. Maybe I'll do a bit of both. The idea behind me hanging these up so beautifully uh, is that by kind of leaving them on the plant like this, it just enables them to potentially ripen a little bit more. Um, there's a lot of green tomatoes, more than we had last year, so some we're going to make chutney out of, but because there's so many, it would just be quite nice to see if some do ripen up a bit more so we can have them in another form, you know, if they're red tomatoes. So um, we'll see, it depends. It's got a bit colder a bit faster this year, so I think maybe they might not ripen as successfully as last year. But the idea being that um, not only do they help each other ripen by producing a, a certain gas, but the, the plant probably has some stuff left in it that it can still be passing to the tomatoes once it's been pulled out the ground. Plus it's just a really good way to keep them hung up by leaving them on the plant. So some of the poorest soils in the market garden are here in the polytunnel and that's because we had to use a uh, mini digger to level the site before we erected the tunnel and so the soils were very mixed up. The excavator driver had to dig down to a level of soil that was pretty poor and, and rocky so um, we are always trying to do whatever we can to boost the fertility of the polytunnel beds. So that's why we're going to be bringing the hens in here. We're not quite ready because we've got this salad to eat first, this lovely uh, mustard mix of young salad leaves. But when they've been eaten, we're going to bring the hens in and we'll probably keep them in electric netting in here for safety because the doors aren't exactly predator proof. And um, we'll be keeping them in the chick shaw and we'll feed them in here. They'll, they'll spend their winter in here where they'll be much happier away from the snow and of course they'll be adding all the fertility that hens bring to a system so we're just tidying up the polytunnel today uh, which is great because it just had some last kind of hanging on vegetables that we were harvesting for the boxes but considering we're almost done with the boxes now um, it's ready to tidy this up so we're weeding we're pulling out old crops and we're starting to take up the landscape fabric and fold that up for another winter before we need it again next spring. So that's some more bean supports down, the last of the legume supports rolled up and put away and um, now we're just going to go around the market garden. There's a lot of uh, netting and um, blue pipes that we use to support the netting that need to be brought out of the beds, taken out of the plots and brought down to some storage. Every year we try and make our storage system better. Uh, Rosa's just working on that just now, just trying to um, pinpoint where we're going to be putting all this fabric and pipe and netting and Tom and I are up in what was the Brazica plot this year yeah we just got to start removing this mm. all the pipes will have a bit of bamboo yep take this baling twine off first get the pipes out collect the bamboo we'll take all the pipes down to the tunnel 
and then think about where have we put them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great. So you end up with quite a few materials really when you're running a market garden. Um, and it's, it's the storage that can be quite tricky because you know, we want to make sure that they've got a long life and that we look after them correctly. So putting them away out of the snow and the wind and the rain really helps. So this entire plot behind me was for brassicas. Um, so we had it netted, landscape fabric, netting, blue pipes, cabbage collars, quite a lot involved. So it's all got to come off now and be put away. some chard for the goats for tonight because also we've got to pull this fabric up so I want to get it out of the way. I generally give them about um, a heat wheelbarrow full of greens every day so I'm just going to fill up this wheelbarrow and then we'll take it over to the buyer. So we realise we haven't given you an update on the work we were doing on the buyer last week. We spent about three days mucking out the entire buyer of all the deep litter of goat bedding and we also made a few modifications while it was empty. We, uh, we've put on some exterior cladding just to help with a draft problem that we had. The goats don't like the wind, so we needed to keep that out. So we banged on some corrugated iron. And if we go into the buyer, you can see that it's had quite a change around. So our volunteer Tom has built some stalls. After we had mucked out the buyer and we had this nice empty floor once again, we took that opportunity and we, we put in some drainage tile, a couple of drains just to take away the excess moisture. We've still to put a, a drain on the exterior north side of the buyer, but for now we've got these two drains inside. And so the main purpose of the stalls is to make feeding time a little bit easier. At the moment, I'm okay doing it, but I'm pretty much holding one goat away from another goat with one leg and feeding one with one arm. And I think if we had more goats than that, first of all, I don't have enough arms and legs. But also, um, if we're ever having someone help out with the goats, I've quickly realised that um, I'm obviously making things a bit too complicated because it takes pages and pages to explain a really simple task. So I think the feeding needs to be a little bit more uh, organised. And so by having these bays, which we are about to put doors on, uh, it will mean that basically I can just put feed in each bay and get each goat into each bay and I don't have the kind of goats stealing food off of each other or Myrtle who doesn't eat uh, grain having the grain from the other two, for example. It'll also be really useful uh, when we have goats and kid, um, just to be able to separate them from the other goat. So it's just, it's great to be able to shut off parts of the buyer. It also saves on straw a little bit because I can really focus. So we put a layer of wood chip down here over the drainage uh, that we've got. Um, and then there'll be more stuff added on top of this a little bit, but mainly I'm focusing putting straw just where they're sleeping um, and that really saves on straw theoretically keeps where they're sleeping drier because I can add more straw to smaller spaces so yeah it's really great got another hay feeder made by Shirley so um, there's just more opportunity for them to feed separately because there can be a bit of competition with that sometimes can now stand under most parts what well, I can yeah, he, he Rosa can't can. A lot of people swear a lot in here. This smells so good. This is our hay, which you can see a few vlogs back we made. 
and it just smells really delicious so you can tell that it's good hay i think when you kind of like the smell yourself oh mm. yeah And these hay feeders, an original prototype um, by Shirley Reed, um, they're great. I really recommend it. It's uh, she's made this just using some stock fencing, some like scrap. You know, you always get little end bits that aren't long enough to use for anything, which obviously we saved because we save everything. Uh, so um, she's just made that into a U shape, and then on the other one, it's chick a chicken wire side to each side. And on this one, she's woven some wire. I can't quite make it out here, but essentially just something to secure the hay from either side. And that's been wrapped around. And then we put the hay inside and the goats can get at it just enough. They still waste a bit of hay, but it's, it still really works out well. So that's why I got her to make a second one because it worked a lot better than the one me and James made. <laughs> Hello. Talk of the devil. Hello. I'm just wondering, um if that means the eggs will roll out. Ah. Because to cut it along there would have made a very sharp edge. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, mum crafting a, a veg box crate into a nest box for our chick shaw. So I think it'll be fine. I don't think they'll roll out, you know, especially once we've got some um, bedding in there. Mm. Have we found a solution to the wheels yet? No. no. I'm not sure if the bits of metal I found, A, are thick enough. Mm -hmm strong enough and otherwise yeah, not to bend yeah, yeah. Or, or actually quite long enough so if we wanted to get the chick show out tonight or out tomorrow morning we just need to try and find another nut mm -hmm. okay so we need to have a look around for a spare nut um yeah we've had a bit of problems with our chick show we were about to take it out this morning and uh the wheels fell off and we lost the nuts and washers. Better without hens in it than with hens. Yeah, luckily there was nothing in it at that time. So we'll just go and have a quick look at that and show you what state the chick show is in. All right, we've got the Team Tap Senior Division working on the, uh, the chick show here. Here's mom and Andy. Andy, I don't think you've been on this vlog yet properly. Well, it's time. Uh, just wait to show me a meat on this. We've got some wheel troubles, uh, axle troubles on the chick show, which is upended here behind me. Mum and Andy, the best brains on the farm, are trying to work out how to do this for us so that we can get on with other jobs in the garden today. Um, so I think rather than disturbing them, I'll leave them alone to get on with that. Uh, hens are very happy at the moment, enjoying the uh, covered compost area. Um, so I don't think we're going to be able to get the hens moved onto the market garden plots today. Oh really? Are you, uh, are you confident are you not? Well, we're changing the plastic to a bit of pipe so it okay. spins round because it means the wheel will be a little bit wobbly but it'll actually just spin without making everything else spin because it's loose okay but we can try it can't we we can try great that's what i like to hear all right so a good bit of optimism there from my mum and andy with regards to getting the chick show fixed so we've just been harvesting a bed of parsnip in, in an outdoor plot here where we're wanting to build the chicken cell uh, where we wanted to take the chick shore to. Um, we've still got to get the poultry netting there which means taking the poultry netting down from somewhere else. So I just don't know whether we're going to manage this tonight. Um, but we've got a fair bit done in the market garden. Lots of fabric rolled up and stored away and tidied up and pegs taken out the ground and cabbage collars collected. Um, but we're starting to lose the light so I think we'll probably have to carry this on tomorrow and getting ready to bring those hens in. And it's Tom's last night, Tom's yeah. last day. So, uh, any final words? Not yet. We're gonna be cracking open the homebrew tonight in celebration the of- The tapple juice. The tapple juice, Boy. for sure. For, in celebrations of Tom being here and Tom going. And I meant that in a positive way. <laughs> so, no, it's been uh, fantastic having Tom here. He's really helped us power on over these last two weeks. Um, it's amazing what you can get done with just one extra person in the team. So yes, 
a uh, good amount of work done uh, in a great positive way. All right, that's the chick show fixed, ready to go. Andy and Mum, the senior division of Team Tappanoth, uh, managed to get it uh, roadworthy for us, just like they thought they would. So we're gonna drag this out tonight, get it in position outside of the hen run, so that during the cover of darkness, the three of us can sneak out, grab a hen each multiple times and bring them into the chick show so that tomorrow morning they're safely inside the chick show ready to take into the market garden. That's the uh, chick show just outside the hen run. Fingers crossed everything will go all right. We'll sneak in there at night time and grab around 25 hens <laughs> to put in here. And uh, yeah, that should be fun. All right, we're gonna go out and see if we can get the hens into the chick show. So this means creeping up on them and grabbing them, chucking them in the chick show. Simple as that. That's cool. <laughs> oh. All right, so here we are at the hens. Just get the chick show um, door open. All right, folks, that's the hens in the chick show. That went surprisingly well. Um, we left a few behind who have been having a bit of a hard time from the roosters of late, so we'll, we'll leave them in the um, straw yard to have a bit of a, a, bit of a retreat to themselves. Um, so we must have got about 22 birds just then. Actually, we should have counted them as we were going. Anyway, we got about 22 birds into the chick show. They're all looking pretty good. There we go, there's the birds there. They're all huddled up um, on the first rung, but um, I'm sure they'll soon find a bit more space. But yeah, that went well. So yeah, we'll leave them here overnight and then get up relatively early tomorrow morning and uh, get them out into the garden. Cool, so good night. Mm -hmm.